Mr. Kometz talked about the DARE program um, over the last three or four weeks. Uh, <clears throat> I've attended a couple of different things involving um, communities and drug related problems. Uh, Mr. Hiscox and myself went down to Beaver Local. Uh, they had their drug education uh, seminar uh, in their auditorium where they brought up um, people from Franklin County and talked to us uh, one night um, for a few hours about what's going on, um, concealment, where kids are hiding things and, and what kids are doing and, and how they're um, progressing with street names that, you know, if we're not up on those kind of things, um, they could be doing it right under our nose. Secondly, I was part of um, a meeting with Family Recovery. Uh, my, uh, Liz Ben Latonia and Southern uh, superintendents were all there, along with Judge Amato and um, the local police department, um, about trying to educate our kids um, with what's going on uh, in the streets. Um, there's a, a movement potentially um, to bring a drug court to uh, the auditorium at the high school where they would actually try um, drug offenses and we could tailor who we would want to see that uh, message and it would actually, you know, there'd be a lot of safety issues because these would be actual criminals that would be tried um, in front of our kids. And um, Judge, Judge Amato has the, uh, the backing of the juvenile courts and, he, and, and, and he's got organizations that he's bringing in and we want to talk about follow-up with our health curriculum and those kind of things to kind of give our kids an idea of drug-related felonies. So, so that's, those are things that I've attended that I will continue to update you on as we move forward with that. They had something like that on TV too about uh, how the parents could, uh, you know, fall, do watch what their kids do and check their text messages and you know get involved in everything that their kids are, are with. Uh, you know that that would help the program a lot too because a lot of them they don't have that kind of supervision or watching at home. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know this. It's kind of a scared straight type of thing. Um, but Letonia and Southern and I and Elizabeth have all come together to say we want to do something. We, we want, we don't want you to just throw a curriculum on our health teacher's desk and say, hey, implement this. We want, we want guest speakers. We want real life situations. We want our kids to understand what is involved because a lot of times the drug abuse leads into domestic violence. It leads into robbery and theft and all those things and, and our kids need to understand that. They need to see that. So we're working in, and I, I will continue to update you on how that endeavor is going. Uh, finally, um, on that on that point, yes, just a couple things. Um, and I, I, we don't necessarily have to put this in the paper, Tom, but I, 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 saw, a, I saw a quote from one of the uh, law enforcement folks that uh, made the comment that the schools aren't doing anything when it comes to uh, drug education. Well, I beg to differ, uh, to be honest about it, and it, 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 dis it disappointed me. And, and, and I'm going to tell you personally, and JB might have an opinion about this or not, but the best, the best thing we can do is to empower our teachers to talk to those kids, to be aware, because that's the first line of defense. Scared straight, stuff like that. It doesn't really have a lot of impact because nobody believes. That's why. That's why you know people get picked up for drunk driving all the time because they don't think it's going to happen to them. So my only comment to that is, is that we have such a great staff and the relationship they have with those kids. We keep encouraging that. That's the best thing we can do. Now we can do other things. I'm not saying that, but but what you're doing you, when you when we spend time with those kids and we talk to them and we're available. To and they feel comfortable about one talking to their teachers. And when they see a problem, when the teacher sees a problem and they say something about it, that's that's how you, you're going to address it. But anyway, that's my own. And, and we wanted, we didn't want another thing to throw on the teacher's plate. So we wanted to create connections with agencies that would be able to come in and talk to the kids and to give them a message 
and then, like you said, use the follow-up between the staff member and the students that, that, to keep open lines of communication open. Right. So. But I have confidence that, you, that we, we are doing a good job. Man. I remember one time uh, we had a program where uh, they brought in convicts with their orange suits on and everything. One guy they brought in had shackles on, and that kind of opens their eyes up when they see something like that, too. Yeah. And, and these guys give their confession and stuff like that, uh, what not to do, and mm -hmm. don't get mixed up with the wrong people. And, you know, it, it has a big impact when you see somebody, a criminal come in with how they ended up. Yeah, and that, that's kind of what they're going to do. That's kind of what, the, what, what the, the process would be, except it wouldn't be after the fact. It would actually be happening.